Hi, good morning, everybody. This is the Human Colony Hucolo Saturday webinar. We have Karen Newman, who was nice enough to join us today. It is October 8th of 2016. So thank you, Karen. Good morning or good afternoon where you are. <laughs> good afternoon. Good morning. Hi, everyone. It's good to be here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for joining <laughs> us. Well, I'm, I'm excited um, to, uh, to be here. Sorry. Sorry, my YouTube just started and it totally confused me. Um, so <laughs> we're just, we're so happy to have you here. And um, we have Theos joining us again this morning. So mm -hmm. um, could you go into a brief description of who Theos is for everyone? Sure. Uh, Theos is, uh, it's an aspect of my higher self. It is essentially part of my soul group um, from but they've told me there's three of them and they have uh, come together as a collective and they have been teaching me my whole life. And so for many years, they were just sort of the, <clears throat> the voice in my head answering the questions that I had. And as I got older, it developed more and more. And, and at one moment, uh, they asked me, did I not want to know their names? <laughs> and I had I was a little embarrassed and I said well I didn't ever really think about you having a name but uh, since that started uh, I then became in a more conversational tone with them um, where they were just you know answering my spiritual questions and trying to give me direction on on things and then uh, in 2012 uh, they asked me what I want them to channel through me and in the beginning I I wasn't so keen on the idea, but um, after a period of time, I got, you know, I got more used to the idea, and uh, yeah, so it kind of started from there. I think that's the way it happens with a lot of people, and then as the relationship has grown, now I'm, you know, channeling for more people um, just in a public sort of forum, but the first time I was really channeling, it was mostly just for me and my own questions, and it was a way to have a separation between the ideas of me and my higher self, you know, that kind of back and forth conversation. And mostly what they talk about is uh, spiritual principles based on oneness and how to see the world in that, from that higher perspective and to, you know, get a, a, a different view because they, they always say there's several views. There's what's happening, you know, in the, and the meaning of that in the moment, but then there's always the broader perspective of, of how that it works into the whole of everything. And that, you know, and then there's, then the third thing is how you perceive it. And that is really a choice. And they're always trying to get me to have the honest perception being honest, being the high per perception and to really see things from, from the truth of what it is and to not get too attached to any of it. And that's, that's always the biggest challenge for everything because you have your reaction in the moment. You have what it means for you, but then there's always so much more that it means for you. So that's who they are and what they are about, really. Okay, yes. Um, thank you for that explanation. And, and really, uh, it's interesting getting for a lot of people, I think, Theos is their perspective on things because it is such a higher level perspective um, it's really about seeing the, the bigger picture uh, yeah from yeah. my my God is Ganesha I don't know uh, people are uh, I, I consider myself to be in the Hindu faith and my God is Ganesha and Theos is exactly in line with that thinking Ganesha is the one that sees things from the broadest perspective and uh, that is the but he that's the idea that Ganesha brings like to the world is, is seeing things for how they really are and to look through and I had a wonderful experience um, where I was uh, doing ayahuasca and I got to meet Ganesha in my ayahuasca experience and everything that I saw was an experience and then it would sort of melt down into Ganesha and he would always go see it's just me it's just it's all just divine it's all just me it's all and it was really trying to remember that everything is just an example or an experience for divinity and and we are divinity so it's just an experience for all of us 
and yeah <laughs> it's hard to explain but that's the way it is yeah that sounds incredible it was amazing um, yeah. now Ganesha is the um I haven't heard the a on it before so that well, is Ganesha, that like a can, female no no Ganesha version of Ganesha there's a hundred there's for every Hindu god there's a hundred and some odd names there's a hundred and eight names of Ganesha but you can call them Ganesha Ganesh Ganapati there's a million different oh. names yeah Huh. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I had um, never heard of it that way. That's very neat. So, um, yeah, it's it's amazing when you really look at your own life, because I know I've been doing this for myself. Just really, when you see, because we have all this daily stuff in our lives, a daily drama, human interactions, whatever interactions going on. Um, if you see it from a high perspective, if you really zoom out, and you, you're like, okay, what is that individual doing? What, what is being affected by everything that yeah. is happening? And it is a butterfly effect. That is how the co-creation stuff seems to um, work out because I know that's still something that I'm like, my 3D human mind is like, okay, wait, so this co-creation thing, how does it really work? So I might... Um, I might I ask a question. I think we about get that. caught That's up it. on, on co creation and, you know, control. And I think the biggest part is not needing to have the control, not wanting it. And um, I have a you know, a lot of us came into spirituality via uh, law of attraction and that thing and you know, that serves a purpose, but that's just a law that exists, like gravity exists or you know, I mean, law of attraction is a higher law, of course it's a spiritual law, but you can't stop there and the law of attraction is really not about manifesting a car it's not about bringing to you what you want it has very little to do with that it has everything to do with understanding that what you focus on you get but at the same time it's about knowing that you're constantly attracting and you're constantly pulling to you things it has very little to do with being a magic trick to make you have uh, this uh, magical life that that is false thinking it's it's I think it's highly uh, detrimental to people because they start to measure themselves am I thinking right am I doing something right it, you know and then you get in the self-flagellation of oh, well maybe I'm not positive enough and maybe I'm it has really nothing to do with that and if you can go one step further it's about letting go of stuff and letting go of the need to uh, be in control of things you can influence stuff in your life and it doesn't mean you shouldn't take action it doesn't mean you shouldn't do anything but sometimes things are the way they are and and, and because things happen on so many different levels you know it's very hard for you to control and it's funny the stuff people think that they will control and the stuff that they're willing not to control I'd, I'd say to you if you could really let go of trying to control anything you will have a lot better flow than you do when you start to, to, to hunker down on stuff and to get attached to stuff. I very yeah. much subscribe to the idea of we need very little and having more stuff is really counterintuitive to really what we need for life. I mean, it's, there's nothing wrong with it, absolutely, but I think we could do with very little and do much better than we do with so much. That's just well, certainly, opinion. especially in kind of the Western um, civilizations, it seems that it's that it's the exact opposite from what a lot of us have been taught to believe. It's like you you need more stuff to be happy. You have to follow the <laughs> advertisements. What what society is telling you to do. So, um, but it, that's that's not yeah, what it's and if, about. if you let go of that, I think you you can you're much happier in a, in a real way. You know, I think that our wealth should be measured by, uh, you know, wealth of compassion, wealth of spirit. How much how much do you love? That should be the measurement of what is great in the world. Not do I have this car or this watch or whatever. I mean, if you want the car and the watch, great, go get it. And you know, not to take away from anything from the craftsmanship of great creativity. I just think that the worship of those things, the desire for those things, is so empty. And and until we, as a society, can really take care of people and and meet people's basic needs, until everybody is eating, until everybody is 
clothed, until everybody has a home, until everybody is safe. All that stuff is just distraction. So, yeah, this, this is probably absolutely. the opposite of what a lot of you expect to hear, but I am definitely not for bring more stuff. I would say get rid of as much as you can and get out from under it because it distracts you. Oh, distracts and weighs you down, it at does. least for myself. All this yep. physical junk we don't junk. need. Just yep. junk. And you Absolute know the thing is, garbage. my mom used to say it, and I know that she's right, and they say it in the spiritual books, that if you really want to clean up your life, clean your house. Get your house in order. If you're in a house and your whole house looks like hurricane went through it, your life probably looks like that too. And It's so I, true. Yeah, when I was a little kid and I well, used to complain, my mom yeah. would go send me to, Ken, you know, go s clean my room, you know? Yep. Well, <laughs> so, and it's, yeah. everybody's raised differently in that sense. And for a lot yeah. of people, I think it becomes like they're, they're just, it's normal. Like, it's comfortable. They don't, they don't see it as like... Um, an issue per se, but they beat themselves up over it, and that then becomes, well, becomes the self, problem. Self self um, perpetuating. Right. But if right. you're drowning in stuff, a lot of the times, and you don't know where things are, and your you know your your life is crowded, your mind is probably crowded. You can you can do a lot by just cleaning your room and cleaning your bathroom and, and taking care of your things. And, you know, it says a lot about how do you take care of yourself? What, how, what, how much value do you put in yourself and what you, you know, I mean, if, if people say, well, I only want the best for me, well, create an atmosphere that is the best. It may not be a million dollar home, but you can make whatever space you're living in clean and livable and it will clean out your mind as well. That's right. Uh, it reminds me of the saying, like, um, "What your your body is your temple." Your it is, yeah. You know, so and your your house, your own personal space, yeah. is absolutely reflective of that as well. And um, so, decluttering the mind. And and what you see, what you physical. hear, what you bring in is what you feed yourself. You know, what kind of what kind of what are you feeding your eyes with? What are you feeding your mouth with? What are you fe feeding yourself with? What kind of thoughts are in your head and it's all controllable from that standpoint. You can, you can, that's where you can control things. You know, what do you take in? What do you, what do you see? What do you eat? What do you hear? What do you listen to? And then it has a lot to do with what comes out a lot of the times too. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, yes, of course there are exceptions and like, sure. you know, when you, when you're out and about, you're hearing things. Yes. But, um, it's also really about refocusing where you're, where you're putting your focus, right? Because yeah, where focus are you focusing is on? energetic um, money. It focuses energetic exchange. Of, it is the only true form, excuse me, not, not just focus, um, thoughts in general. They're the only true form of what monetary exchange in the sense of energy. It, it's all... Yeah. It, so, um, you know, I, I, everything, everything can be good in balance. I mean, everything is, cre everything is creation, you know, and, and Bashar, uh, Bashar says it, and, and, and it's true. He says, if all that is, if God is all that is, then all that is is God, and there's nothing that isn't that, um, you know. But again, there's always the bigger lesson of well, what are we supposed to do with it? What are we supposed to have learned from it? And we can create whatever it is we want. So what kind of world do we want to create? And we can't wait for life to happen to us, but we can actively take care of our own stuff and, and, and not wait for it or, you know, not hope that it's going to be different, but actively take steps to, to, to do something about it. And it, and it may just be as simple as cleaning your house. Seriously, I, I, I really, I really right. think that that's true. Moving the energy, the, the dormant yeah. energy starts to just kind of weigh well, that's what down. feng shui is based on, is, yeah. is the movement of energy. And you can find feng I took a feng shui class, I don't know how many years ago, but you can find everything about feng shui on the internet. And, and it's, it, there is, you know, when you move certain things in your house, when you declutter, when you clean, it freshens it up. The house becomes alive. The house, you know, the house is a living uh, energy you know, holder of your energy and everything else, and the, the, the vibration of your house completely changes. There goes my dog chasing my cat. 
<laughs> my dog is a herding dog. My one of my dogs. He's a herding dog. So oh. whenever the cat wants to come in here, he wants to herd her in a different direction. Oh, that's, so that's funny. So that's always what's happening. All right. Well, that makes more sense. Yeah. So, oh, that's yeah. cute. <laughs> um, so I realized that we, I didn't get to talk about events going on, so let oh. me quickly touch on sure. um, what's happening, especially today, so we can get started and bring in Theo, so we got a little carried away here, but this is, it's important sometimes to just kind of, you know, re re readjust your um, perspective. That's really what it comes down to. So, um, Human Colony events page, you can please go to humancolony.org for all information. Um, new events we have coming up, if you want participation links and YouTube links to events we're doing, humancolony.org slash jump, J-U-M-P. It is the new document we have set up that auto refreshes with our information, so check it out. Um, and so today we have something particularly, particularly exciting to share. Our very own favorite channeler in the sense that him and Max started Human Colony, James Charles, Mr. Jim. Jim is doing uh, the channel panel today, and we're so excited that he's a part of the channel panel. It's like a a multiple day event, I think two day event, um, where they bring in a whole bunch of channelers and, uh, sorry, it's not today, he's going tomorrow. He will be starting um, his broadcast because it is broadcasted. If you um, sign up for it, you can watch the feed. Um, it is recorded and then also if you're around, they might still have spots open. Definitely check it out. It's etwhisperer.com slash channel dash panel. You can also just Google the channel panel and it will come up. Um, so check it out if you want to see Jim channeling tomorrow night at 8 p.m. EST. Please check him out. We love supporting our channelers in the Human Colony channeling community as well as all other channeling communities as we are all channelers. Technically, we all channel Whenever we're doing something that when we lose track of time and we're just super excited and into what we're doing, that actually is a form of, of uh, channeling. So it's super interesting that um, uh, we have Jim being a part of that. We're really excited. Um, also, we do have um, our next Human Colony Saturday webinar next week will be with um, Sabrina is going to be joining us to channel so that will be on October 15th again at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time so please join us for that as well and um, further events will be pending and incoming so um, keep up to date with humancolony.org with that said I know that um, Krellick, I think you said you had an announcement you wanted to make. Please go right ahead. Well, actually, I just wanted to say that I uh, just wanted as many people as possible to uh, to pray for the earth because recent events have me concerned a bit. Um, major superpowers have started to uh, threaten each other, and I find that concerning that it may escalate into a, another global conflict. So I just okay. wanted to ask for people to send their love to the earth and their loving energies to prevent that possibility from happening. Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, thank you. And, it, and especially for um, all things going on right now, including Hurricane Matthew. I'm not sure, actually I haven't checked this morning if that is still raging, but um, I know there were major issues with it recently so please send thoughts prayers and um, you know your intentions for things to heal please send your healing to all the people affected and um, yeah there's a lot going on right now in the world as far as things kind of changing and shifting and we all just um, have to do our best you know with, uh, with what's happening. So thank you, Krellick. I appreciate that. Um, 
prayers, prayers, prayers. So um, did anybody else have anything that they wanted to announce as far as upcoming events? I don't think I had heard anything um, previously. Karen, did you want to touch on, um, please, where people can find you and everything, your show about oneness? We'd love to hear. Yeah, um, the show is on uh, Pyramid One Network, which is pyramidonenetwork.com. And you can find me there every Tuesday night from uh, 6 p.m. EST till 7 p.m. It is also on Mixcloud, and you can find me there by About Oneness or under my name, Karen Newman. And you can hear any show that's been on. This is my cat, Monkey, who likes to sit here while I'm going to channel. So, yeah, you can find me there. And uh, you can, if you want, uh, you can uh, send me an email through uh, Human Colony. Um, send it to Jim or to uh, Max and they'll be able to get in touch with me so and I do private readings and if you would like that you can set that up with Jim or or uh, Max and, yes. and I want to tell Max thank you so very much because this microphone here is uh, uh, was arranged for me by him and uh, it's great so because he got tired of hearing me with sub Far sound. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Yes. He was being kind, cool. but also uh, he was also just, you know, saying, okay, we're going to fix this now. That was very nice of him to send you yeah, that. So thank he, you so much. I love it. Seems, yeah. Seems like a good microphone. I, I need seems to look into it. Seems very good. Like and, and, I, and I don't have to talk very loud. I'm just talking my normal voice. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Wonderful. All right. Well, thank you. And, Monkey, you um, ready? <laughs> yeah, monkey. I didn't know your cat's name was monkey. That is adorable. Okay. Um, I yeah. did want to also open up the floor. If anybody wants to um, give a blessing before we get started, yeah. I think that would be absolutely lovely to yes, yes. have something like that come through. I know I have something kind of tickling me in the back of my heart chakra. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's been it's been a journey since I started this whole light language thing. Since I started speaking light languages, I'm like just absolutely elated. Every second of my existence has become infinitely more um, exciting. I, it's it's definitely a passion for me. Some people just don't care, but I love it so much. It's so much fun. So, um, so with that said, uh, I I will do a quick blessing. Other people can go after if they'd like to. Um, and then we can get started and bring in Theos. So. Okay, perfect. Ya shono wa ya hana yota ya koshono wo fu ana yata. Ara koshona ya tata yono oroko ta ya hana toto shomana ya kara oto. Maya no osho anayata kani osho naya aroto o moya hana o kaya nani o arata mosoro ko ayata shono ko ayata ta osha naya ayoko maya toto roko maya shini o toko aya iroko shono toto roko anaya toko namaste namaste thank you. Does anyone else have anything? Wonderful. Yeah, I can. Uh, I can oh, hi, Brian. Yeah, please. Hey, how are you guys doing? Good. Wonderful, Brian. Thank blessing. you so much. Yeah, yeah. Yes. All right, hold on here. Can you all hear me okay? Ilioko sono wata. Iagia. Wokoto ni iakia koto. Iliaka ni shakati, iliako toa, ni si hiko koto kuhu, ini aka kiato, ilioto, i shaka kiato, alia, uso kua, ia lalu, ukinia, solo shakotua. Namaste. 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 Thank you, Brian. Uh, I just want to say I've, I've been channeling uh, lately with my eyes open, so it's a little different, but uh, I've been channeling lately with my eyes open. And now I'm even uh, doing more where I'm switching back and forth between me and Theos, though I don't know if that'll happen today. Oh, so we'll see. Nice. How it goes. 
That's super cool. Yeah, I remember um, when we had you on last time, you said that was the first time you had channeled with your eyes open. And like I said, I didn't on, even know yeah, until camera, after. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was awesome. So that's super cool. What can you explain? I'm kind of curious. Um, how is it different for you? Is it just like you're you're getting used to not being distracted, basically, or? Um, well, I, I have to say that when I was channeling with my eyes open, I still was not seeing <laughs> the things that I thought that I was seeing. Do you know what I mean? Like, for instance, you had yeah. was it you that had the uh, geometric pattern? But when yep, I was seeing it, logo. when I was channeling, it looked like a smiley face that was bopping back and forth. And I was so surprised whenever uh, I stopped channeling and I saw this sort of mandala looking thing because it was totally different than what I was seeing. So when I am channeling, I, I still am not, I'm seeing the world differently. I'm definitely uh, uh, seeing things differently. Um, I know that when I look at the animals and stuff, when I'm channeling, they look more like, um, they look more like energy balls. I don't know how to explain it. You know, things look more muted and, and stuff. So, um, yeah, it's a different, interesting because you're still in trance, right? Um, right. but, uh, I've been doing more where I, I am talking and then I'm switching back and forth from them to me, them to me. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't know how to explain it, but it, it's. Like, but I will say that it's still like I'm in trance, but like I can come through for a second, and then I go back to them, and vice versa. But I still am in, in a little bit of a of a trance. Yeah, I don't know how it works, <laughs> but it, it's new for me. So it's new for me. So uh, I, I don't yeah. know how to explain it. But my cat likes to watch me channel. <laughs> he likes to be right in my face. So he's right here. Oh, he's right here. That's adorable. He's right here for it. I like seeing your reaction to your animals walking around when you're channeling. It's even better. Um, it's fun. So uh, I just wanted to double check with everybody. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we're having, some people are saying they're having uh, video and audio issues. I know your video is cut out for me. I don't want to oh, spend too it? much time on it. Um, video isn't the most important. Your audio is okay for me, but... Uh, just 444, is it, is it doing better now, the video and audio? Um, she had come out and come back in. I just want to make sure this is working out for everybody um, and then that they're, that they're able to actually watch and enjoy. Yeah. Can so, you hear me and all that stuff? Yes. I can hear you all right. Can you see me? Um, can you see me? Uh, I cannot see you but I'm hoping that is just my internet being silly. Let me just do this um, and see if that makes a difference. I just turned my camera off and on again. I don't know if that made any difference. Sure. Yeah, Jess said that it is better for her, and um, people on YouTube, thank you, Omar, I'm um, mm -hmm. saying everything's okay for them. Okay. So let's just push uh, right on forward and not worry about it. So um, okay. wonderful. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. Let's bring in Theos and uh, let's get some questions rolling here and consciousness expansion. Okay, great. And just, just what I said before. Um, it, oh, yeah. yes. I, Thank you. I, just, I forgot to make an announcement. They're not very, uh, <laughs> not very big on uh, answering questions about, about our ET friends. Um, yes. It's just, that's really not, because, especially when it comes to Griffic Near, just because that's just not their domain. Right. They're not existing within physical form. They have very little interaction with any kind of beings other than coming through. And, and their teaching is really about, uh, yeah, higher spiritual um, endeavor. So if you can raise your questions to that, that's that's where they are. I mean, they can do it, believe me, but it's not what they prefer to talk about. That's all I'm just going to say. Okay. Yes, wonderful. Thank you for um, making that clear. So really for anybody, if you do have questions like that, please check out some of our other stuff that we do in Human yeah. Colony or other channelers. I know that is a hot topic and it's wonderful, but maybe not for Theos because usually the answers end up being, um, you should go somewhere else for that. So, and that's okay. You <laughs> but know? tune in tomorrow to the that's channel okay. panel and, and Takur will be there yeah. answering all your questions. I love Takur. Absolutely. Takur is so awesome. Okay. Oh, oh. 
I'll just tell you the first time I the, how I met Jim the first time is he was on Rob Garthier's uh, radio show and with Takur. Really? And yeah, and what? I remember I was listening and this, you know, Takur's deep voice came across, and I was like, wow, this is really a. Um, Incredible, you know, the, the information was so sweet and loving. And then um, Tucker said, Well, as a woman, and I went, What? <laughs> I just was like, I've got to meet this guy. <laughs> He's got this I know. burly woman. I know. <laughs> Tucker was actually the first um, entity that I had seen, Jim. And yeah. Tucker just, it was just a video. But yeah, I know exactly what you mean. It's like this <laughs> booming, like, <laughs> yeah. it's even better in person, I swear. Yeah. Oh, I haven't, I haven't had that joy yet, but yeah, I can imagine. Oh my God. Okay. Anyway, oh, me... get off track here. Yes. So, um, we welcome in Theos and thank you so much, Karen. We appreciate thank it. Thank you. Namaste. Okay. Namaste. We are Theos. We are very pleased to be here with you today. Welcome, Theos. Thank you for joining us. We're going to mute the microphone. No problem. Um, hopefully, you can still hear us with your headphones on. Um, we appreciate having you back here today, and I know that there's a lot going on in the world, um, especially with the new energies coming on, and there's just so many changes happening right now with it being October of 2016, the year of change. And so my first thing I would hope we could get a little bit more expansion on from your point of view is um, the ch these changes we're all going through in our own personal lives in as far as the world is going. Could you expand upon um, the energies and the changes and maybe ways that we can uh, work through this a little bit better? Yes, uh, we will say to you that we have just come out of a period of huge turmoil as far as things moving and changing. We're still in incredible turmoil, but we are coming to the end of a cycle. We are officially within the age of Aquarius. We're in a nine, nine, nine cycle now. And if anyone understands numerology, they know that the nine comes before the next cycle of one but you do get the one of the zero. So it's moving through nothingness and then creation again. It's a very interesting time because now is when you will be completing a lot of things and also coming to a conclusion of them. They may not complete in the way that you want them to, but it will be the end of a lot, the end of a lot of cycles. And that's a quite, can be very tumultuous in, in ways because things can abruptly end because it's very much time to move into something different. It's also something to look forward to, fresh slate, new beginnings, and the integration of it is really just accepting all of that energy and letting it flow and not resisting it. The more you resist it, it's an inevitable transition. It is, it is the cycle of the world and if you resist it it's going to happen just it will be more painful in letting things happen it sounds quite like a negative spin and we don't want to give you that impression that it's negative it's just about you know when you come to the end of something you know when it's time to let something go you know when it's time to look forward to something new and that's the time that we're in now and that will continue throughout the rest of this this period so don't uh, don't fight it. Just go with it and, and let things flow forward. The resistance yes. is what makes you tired. The resistance is what makes you uh, have turmoil. 
It's if you let it flow, you may not notice anything and you may just all of a sudden notice things are different, things are new, things are moving along in a different direction. But a lot of times you resist because you, you don't understand why all of a sudden something is just changing. Just take it on board and let it, let it, let it flow. And be willing to let it go and be willing to let it transition. And that's the best thing that you can do. Always, but especially now. Yes, absolutely. I love that you brought up resistance because um, what I'm starting to understand is perhaps we could, if, if we look at the universe um, as ones and zeros, mm -hmm. as numerology is in, in its purest bare essence form, resistance would then perhaps be a zero, right? And a yes. one would be... The one is the beginning. Allowing. Yeah, the one would be the beginning of anything. The one is, you know, uh, uh, numerology, uh, and if you go back to sacred geometry, the, the one is, there was first nothing, and then the first point, and that is the one, and as it starts to stretch out. So we're at that collapsing. If everything is a wave, you know, we're at that low point of the wave, we're at that point where we're down to zero, where everything's contracting and expanding, and we're in a contraction we're at what, let's say it like this, we're at the point where it's most expanded, but what happens is it contracts suddenly and then starts over again. And in that contraction, things get collapsed and squeezed out. But it's, it's the same as uh, the seasons. It's the same as the winter to the spring. It's the same as the end of that. You know, Don't mourn the, the fallen leaves on the, on the ground as they die and wither away because spring is coming and we're at the moment of the last winter before the new spring. So look at it from that perspective. Be excited about spring coming. The promise that it will come is, is, is always there. We always know, we never are, we wait, we wait for it, we get excited about it because we get tired of the cold, but we know that it's coming. So let it come. And, and, you know, now's the time to let go of the things that you <clears throat> don't want anymore. But appreciate them for having happened. Appreciate all of it. And then when the new things come, you can nurture them. You have to nurture something in the beginning. You don't nurture it when it's almost dead. You let it go. And, and you and move on to the new. So plant your seeds now for what you want to grow for the future nourish it that is a mm, go ahead yeah um see we're talking about basically cycles numerology mm. nines yes. this is a nine year and and so yes. we are moving into the next cycle um and everything that we are all, all the seeds that we are sowing right now so to speak yeah will um be expanded upon tenfold Yes, so whatever you've planted in the past is coming to fruition now, and now is time to think about how you want it to be different. The world has shifted, things are shifting, people are shifting, the mentality has shifted so much in the last 10 years. It's really, really amazing, and that will continue. Whole new generations of people are, are coming up. You can think of it every 10 years. You've got a whole new generation of adults, a whole new generation of people that are influential and this is the time when they start to thrive so nurturing now for the or nurturing as they start to grow is really important we are sowing the seeds of the future or the past pardon the past generations and as we want to have things continue in a positive way we have to nurture the future generations that's why children are always the future that's where that saying comes from we nurture them so that when the next cycle comes and they stand up they're ready to take on things but that's also true for you yes every cycle you also are ready to stand up so whatever you're doing now you're really going to see it the result of it on the next at the end of the next cycle you will know if you've done it well at the end of the next cycle and cycles are there's many cycles and there's long ones but the 10-year cycle is is quite uh it's quite important so plant the seeds for what you want for the next 10 years 
and you'll see the fruition of it. That's interesting you bring up a 10-year cycle. Um, in terms of generations, I haven't heard it put that way per se, only because I know there was a lot of focus when I was going through college um, on the generations becoming smaller and smaller, the generation gap becoming smaller and smaller because of technology. Do, just really quickly, is there anything you'd like to touch on with that, especially like in countries like India, where um, the technology advancement has been so quick as opposed to their actual um, society and how things are done there? Um, and they've said that the generation gap has just gotten so extremely small because of technology. As far as how that is true in the real world application, when it comes to generation gaps and things like that, that's not quite what we're, what we're talking about, but we would say that technology has brought everyone closer together in good ways and in negative ways. It's also driven uh, uh, made made people further apart because the interpersonal reactions and relationships have dwindled because so much of things are done through non you know non uh, personal means you, you you have relationship with people you never meet face to face you you are interact through a tech you know through technology and that has put up as many barriers as it has opened as many doors so on an intellectual basis, many people have grown because they've gone from having no awareness to very much awareness of the way things are in the world and the way things go. But at the same time, you know, there's been a lot lost on that standpoint. There's a whole generation of children that have really little experience with playing outside and they've spent all of their time doing this. That's totally a different kind of thing. So. When it comes to cycles of how things progress, techno technologically things are moving very quickly, but still the true fruition of anything comes in these, these cycles. You can say nine years and the 10th year being the new renew year, but ultimately they're all 10 years. So we'll just be a little bit clear about that. We're not talking so much about generation gaps between people. Those that exist, we will say a lot of people stay a lot younger for a lot longer, which is, which is quite a good thing because they stay fresh and they stay up to date, but that's because health is improved and you know, the way that people interact is improved. But at the same time, a lot is lost with technology. A lot is lost, especially in the connection to the planet, the connection to people on a holistic way. And that's where improvements need to be. Take your technology with you, but go sit under a tree and, and, and uh, do some of your WhatsApping and your Facebook. Yeah, um, intention, right? And just kind of refocusing where, how we are using these tools because they are tools and they are just um, tools. Yeah, they aren't yeah. meant to be. They aren't meant to be everything. You know, there's nothing that replaces the physical to physical hug of two people together. There's nothing that replaces that. You can't. You can't say to someone, "Well, your, your friendship is less with someone." who you only know via the internet but there is something about community and knowing your surroundings and and being able to walk in your your nature that's outside of you because you have to take care of that as well and to only live your life in front of a computer is it's less of a life than you could have there's more and the earth is amazing so don't ignore her she misses you. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. So much about that reconnection. That has changed my life uh, truly in this past year as I've begun my awakening process. And um, I was thinking a lot about virtual reality and kind of how that's going to play into um, as things continue to change and for those who... Um, you know, may want a different form of an exit point. Because I grew up as a gamer. You know, that was all I did as a child was I really, I played a lot of video games. And it gave me an amazing perspective on uh, things, especially now with the the whole concept of, you know, this, this crystalline matrix and all of these understandings that 
makes more sense from a gaming perspective because yeah. why run a server if there's nobody there to play on the server? Right. You know, so, <laughs> technology is... It's interesting to see reality in that aspect. It, well, the perspective from the, from the gaming is, is very true to how things are. But the element that's missing is the connection to the earth. And those connections are, how can you say it? They are technological imitations of the spiritual matrix. And that's why it's so appealing because in the introduction of technology, we do have the connectivity. We do have the ability to interact with anyone, anywhere, at any time. We have the ability to, you know, have exchanges, and, and there can be there can be purchases of goods, and they can be changes of ideas that you can create an entire world online. The thing is, is that that is a technological imitation of true creation, and. It's a necessary one because it fulfills a need, but it's also teaching us the way things really are. If you see things how they are in technology, you very much see them mirrored within the spiritual world. That's not a mistake. That is because it's how things are. So the, the jump then is to get that in your spiritual connection and to be able to, within human colony, they talk a lot about you know, telepathy and things like that. Well, that doesn't come via a telephone. It comes via meditation, opening your mind, opening your brain, opening yourself. And that will, those connections will be built. But like you said, if there's no one on the server, there's no point in even playing the game. And so if people are spending all their time technologically playing, then they're not spending their time spiritually growing so they get to the point where they can tap into the world wide web of spirituality and those things and have those communications. So spend a little time in meditation, getting your own brain wired to the cosmic internet so that you can make those connections. And you, you'll do that by being still and by meditating and not so much by only staring at your phones and using your thoughts. That is so beautiful, the cosmic internet. Oh, I love that so much. Um, it is so true. Reconnecting to all that we are in this cre is, this we web of that. creation. The the world had that. That was the way it was. The you know, that the, there was a time where the people of the planet were connected. They did all of their talking to their ancestors. They did their talking to the stars. They were able to yes. communicate and communicate those ideas. We just went a different way. And that's because of, of technology and all the advances that were made. It, it's, it's the human condition to always want something better and to forget that where you're standing is pretty good sometimes. So now is about having this, but also reawakening to that. and making choices to to be in balance with that there will come a time and it's not tomorrow but there will come a time where you don't need the internet it might be just a matter of convenience but you will if you are truly telepathic what do you need the internet for that's an interesting point um and i know that us as a race we are going to be a telepathic race in the next what 50 100 150 who knows how long that doesn't really matter we're we're moving towards that and we're seeing that a lot in our youth and um yeah. and especially in those different forms of like I, i'm hearing a lot of stories about autistic children you know and and the, the parents that are communicating with their autistic children telepathically and it's so cool to see the mainstream focusing on this because it is showing at least from my perspective it's showing that it is a natural um, thing because there's been this fear of uh, you know tele telepathy in terms of with technology and you know oh 
moving towards oh combining with robots and all that all that craziness uh, artificial intelligence stuff this is separate this is actually our natural state of being is um, understanding each other right and and being able to connect with each other yeah and the, the, the thing that really will strip it away is the realization about oneness and the the block to telepathy and the block to all connectivity is believing in separation and that has so many levels that are apparent in our society if you believe that you're different than anyone if you believe that there's separation between you and another then there will be and that has to be let go of on all levels and that's why we are not there so it's not so much about sitting and concentrating and really you can you can do it that way and you can approach it from the sort of martial arts uh, idea of chi and, and tapping into it but that's very few people will ever be able to overcome that because the one idea that's missing is the disillusion of the idea of anything being separate at all anything and, and in, in having the idea of separation it dictates everything in life it dictates how you treat people how you interact with people the way that you uh, walk in this planet and that is the big learning for everyone is the idea that we are one you cannot just go around and say it and hold hands and dance around and then turn around and be nasty to your neighbor or you can't you know turn around and, and think that uh, this person is going to take something you, from you by coming to your country wanting a new life. That's, those are all ideas of separation. There, there would be a much faster progression if we could realize how connected we were. So that's what we need to work on. The letting go of these ideas of separation, letting go of these ideas that anything is outside of us it's all within us it's all within us we are in the perfect mind of the divine and we are all part of that that play that is that is happening but if we want to uh, yeah have these these experiences we have to find our connection to each other that's the connection to the worldwide the cosmic web is the connection to each other it's already there but our blinders are keeping us from tapping into it yes yes and i am forever now grateful more grateful than ever for this um illusion of separation we have here and the forgetfulness and because it is all for the sake of the experience and we are having such amazing beautiful experiences and it's so incredible to see life and reality and everything that we have for what it is and the beauty and the love that mm -hmm. it is from the truest, most um, basic standpoint. And I, I really I wanted to throw that in there because it has been life altering for me to um, see that in, in all of creation. So thank you for um, touching on that, especially with uh, in terms of connection and, and in terms of, for instance, what the topic you brought up with immigrants, that's something that I, I've heard just so much um, nastiness about and it's hard for me because there are people in my life very close to me, family members and otherwise that are extremely resistant towards it and I'm seeing it all now for what it is on a higher level and it, it is also beautiful because slowly we're seeing people starting to come together or um, look at things from a different perspective and and uh, it, it is very beautiful. It's, it's, it's sort of double because you have a group of people who want to get to a certain place and then you have another group of people who don't even know there's a journey to be had. They're very much locked into what they're doing and what they're experiencing. And, and you know, unfortunately, there's a lot of anger uh, in the world uh, at the moment. There's a lot of hate and, and the distrust and all those things and you always 
look at that and you think, how, how do you overcome that? How do you get past that? And that is, again, one of the things we'd like to say is generational. It is, it's not something that is going to always happen in the current situation, but you plant the seeds for the future and then they grow up. That's why, you know, when you see older people, they're very resistant to changing because they have sown their seeds and they're reaping their life and they are walking. So if we look at how past generations and what has led the world to where it is now, not saying that certain people don't change, but please stay with me, that that is why the world is the way it is. So if we look at what's led up to it, we can make different choices going forward so that as the future moves on, the people coming up, the young ones coming up, who will take those steps, who will have a bigger chance to have a world like we want it to have, is that's, that's where that starts. And it starts always now. Every, every day, every moment is the beginning of a new nine-year cycle. Just think of it that way. You always have the chance to change something now for the future, now for the future, now for the future. And, and in the moment, you also have the great reward of, of living in your truth. So never be worried that you're not going to see what you plant. You always will see it. You may not see it in this body, but you'll see it and you'll experience it. And you're very much part of it because you are creating the future for your future you. So... Yes, your future you. What do you want mm -hmm. that to become? Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Theos. Um, I think it's about time for us to move to questions. I got a little carried away talking to you, but I love this higher level discussion, uh, ability for discussion and moving more towards that for everyone. So I appreciate it. We're happy to um, answer any questions that you have or people have. And yep. We will wonderful. Okay. Questions. Okay, so let it let's start with Pavel. He to Hey, can you yes. hear me? Yes. Yes. Hello. Hey. Hi Pavel. Hi. Hello. Hello, <coughs> Hello Tios. Um Hello. I want to thank you for your uh, last time uh, uh, my, uh, answering my query. Mm -hmm. um, so I did what you said, so I'm already changing my um, <clears throat> point of view on things. Mm -hmm. And um, I have a question about, uh, I think, two, uh, two different teachings, or maybe three. Mm -hmm. I, don't know, I don't know, like, if you're familiar with like, you were talking about Bashar, hmm. and uh, and I want to ask you if you know the teaching of uh, someone who calls himself uh, Suran. He channels uh, in Israel mostly, and it's really uh, two different points of view. Hmm. And I want to ask you your opinion about uh, what what you think about this philosophies of uh, living. We will say this, and this is going to sound very avoidant, but it really isn't. It is because Karen asked us this question, especially when she had someone on her radio show that she absolutely did not agree with at all. She was diametrically opposed to every word that came out of the person's mouth. And we said, how is this possible to her that you don't understand? what uh, what this person is saying how are you so resistant and she didn't know why she was so resistant but she knew she didn't like it and we proposed this idea to her and you can accept this or not accept it but we proposed the idea to her is that all things are true everyone is living within their own created world everyone we interact with each other because we choose to do so we interact with each other and it's a privilege to share some commonalities, but that all things are true. And that by being exposed to other 
ways people are thinking and other ways people are living. You're in fact being given the privilege to peek into their world without actually having to live it. So we would say to you that whatever teaching is out there is for a certain person and for a certain group of people who want to hear that certain thing. And then all things are true. So choose what resonates with you, what is matching your vibration, what inspires you, and the rest don't worry about it. And that's what we'll say about that. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, so I understand you. So if you're our own creators, so it doesn't really We're matter. We're our own creators in the fact that we are taking the time to have this experience. And literally that's what we're doing. We have set into motion things uh, that, that we are experiencing and we are choosing how we react to them. We don't expect that you're going to go and create a universe that's at a higher level than what's in this physical body's capability. It's not impossible on the God level, but it's pretty improbable on the human level. We don't want to put limitations on you, but we have yet to see any human create a world directly. But your scientists are busy with it. So we create our own realities in the fact that we have made choices to be here. We have made choices to experience the world. But we are experiencing our world. It's the same way you can have two people in a room and they will have very different experiences, even when interacting with a third person in the same conversation. They will have very different reactions to what is said, feelings about it, and perspective. It's the same thing always, and it's the same thing with any teaching. Choose what you want to, to understand and choose what resonates with you because a lot of times truth is relevant in the moment. It's the same way you can be hungry now, but not hungry an hour from now. Does it mean that you weren't hungry? Does that make it the, the fact that you are hungry? Does that make it untrue? Well, yes, it's untrue in the moment, but it was true in the other moment. And that's the same way truth works most of the time. The only things that are true is really that we're all here at this point and that we may or may not be here in another point and that we exist that is truth because we are eternal and that all is love but other than that pretty much everything is a sliding scale so choose what you want take on board any of it that serves you if it doesn't serve you let it go but other people who choose to believe that or listen to it or hear it depending on who they're listening to it's it's all okay so don't get caught up on it. Just choose what's good for you. And, and if it's not good for you anymore, move on. Um, Karen is wanting you to, to, us to tell you that uh, uh, she's had different things that she's believed, and then now she doesn't believe them, and she doesn't believe them at all compared to way, the way she did, say, years ago. But it was true in the moment, and it served her. And then when it didn't serve her anymore, she let it go. She had a hard time thinking, oh, was I wrong? But no, you're never wrong. You're just choosing to believe or not believe in any moment for anything. So. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, thank and, you. And we will also say that if those two teachers were to come face to face and start an argument about who's right and who's wrong, then that's really their egos wanting to be right, needing to be better. And that's definitely has nothing to do with who we really are. The uh, allowing, the, the acknowledgement that all things are, you know, is, is, is the higher uh, way of looking at that. And uh, it's a privilege to be able to look at somebody else's perspective and say, wow, they're living in a completely different world. How interesting. Look at it from that per, um, perspective and don't, don't judge it at all. Okay, yes, I, I, I totally understand you. And uh, I have a question about choosing, uh, choosing our life. 
like um, the, so the question is uh, we choose the country the family the is this uh, tied to some karm karmic law or to be tied to or like uh, either really a karmic thing like with different people different countries different families and why we choose this yes in all perspectives there's a difference between karma and dharma dharma is your life's path that is the path that you're walking you're always living your dharma you can be more in line with your say true dharma versus your uh, situational dharma but but dharma is your path karma is a little bit misunderstood because karma is not just punishment people always say oh karma will get you well yes and no karma is the based actually if you think about that for every action there is a equal reaction there is something that comes back that is that is whatever you have set the path for you will get uh, things things back for instance if you do something very good then things very good will come back to you if you do something very bad something very bad will come back to you on on a different level but it's not just about you know negativity karma tends to be negative everything is karma you're living your karma right now if you look around your your experience everything that you're interacting with is based on some kind of karma some kind of past whether it's this life or another life the karma is is always present so there's no mistake that you are wanting to go to a certain place that you feel a tie but you can have many ties to many places again that's why it's your choice you can choose it maybe you want to work on this karma you want to you want to work on the karma that you have with a certain place and a certain group of people so you you move in that way maybe you don't want to so you go in a different direction but it's all karma you it's very few if any are new so unless this was your first go on the merry ground of uh, merry-go-round of uh, existence it would be very rare that anything that you were dealing with wouldn't be some kind of karma the thing that you can also look at is that you're you're dealing with karma as far as ties but again like we said you're always sowing the seed of the next thing so whatever you go into realize that you're healing past things you're 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 reconfiguring them or at least trying to or and, and sorry and you are creating the future for yourself so whatever it is that you want to do follow your gut it's it's there's really no wrong answer it's what do you want to face in, in, in whatever you're whatever you're dealing with a lot of people want to move away from home when they get to a certain age because they they need the break from the the constant karma that they have with family they want to have some some break from that but a lot of times you see people go back home because they're ready to face it then and they're ready to do it they know they have the the tools so decide if you have the tools to go to wherever it is you want to go, whether it's going home or going somewhere else. Does that make sense for you? Did that answer your question? Um, yeah, on a, on a basic level, yes. It, uh, it, well, we will never tell you what to do. We will only <coughs> tell you, basically, what it's about. So we're not going to tell you where to go and 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 what to do and we we thank you for asking us that but we don't want that responsibility we want you to make that choice because ultimately it's your life and we have our own things to make choices about so yeah sure sure the question yeah i was just wanna wanted to know like <clears throat> uh if yeah you answered in a, in a in a some level Yes, but so you're saying that there is um, and many levels of karmic choices. There and always are, yes, there always are. And even the country we choose is a different set of rules grammatically than other countries. So it is some kind of yeah. karmic choice. In, in a, 
country level the, choosing. Well, what we would like to say to you is that there's always going to be several things at play here. There's going to be, if you're looking at, a, a say, a buffet of choices, you're saying, okay, I can go here or I can go there. And what is pulling me this way? What is pulling me that way? If you, if you really understand how things are, you came into this world to experience. You have all of your parallel existences and lives and connections that are always at play. So there's always going to be something. You know, if your other parallel lives are maybe playing in this arena, you've had different interactions with family members in different lives and, and things in this arena, there's going to be some of that, that that you want to heal, that you want to experience again because it was great and fun and wonderful. So you're going to feel those pulls. You know, if you feel a pull in two different directions, it's because you definitely have those connections. If you're not feeling a pull to a certain place, you can realize that's not something that I, at this time, that is right for me. So, yes, you, you, we would say to you that you always are having those connections and you shouldn't doubt it too much. And at the same time, not only not doubt it, but don't worry about it so much. Choose what makes you really excited because you just want to do it. If you are in the luxury position right now, of having the ability to choose whatever it is you want. Go for the thing that's really going to make you happy. You don't need to self-flagellate and go somewhere to suffer. Go somewhere where you think, this is going to give me a really good life. This is going to be, be good for me and, and whomever you're bringing with you. And choose it from that standpoint, if you have that luxury. So don't make it more complicated but follow your heart follow your gut say this is what i want and it's okay to want it because you want it you know because it just feels good it's like saying i want chocolate ice cream because i just like it and it'll make me happy to eat it do it from yes yes yeah. yes it's yeah. yeah um it's true um i was yeah just i was talking about uh, birth the choosing of a birth place like mm. If I mm. choose to be born Jew in Russia or something like that, is it something meaningful karmically or it was just a chance choice? So. Well, <clears throat> yes and, and no. Um, it, it's, it's just another experience of the Creator. And it's just, uh, from the higher perspective, it's just an, yet another experience you will have chosen your life because it will present to you uh, specific uh, challenges and learnings that you as a soul want. Um, and, you know, Karen is thinking right now about as she was a child growing up, being born in the U.S. and hearing that the U.S. was the best place in the world and no place was better. Um, and that is really not really even relevant to life. I mean, that's it, it, it kind of is skewed um, perspective and it's quite limiting to believe that only one place has any kind of value. Um, the, the, the reason that you will have chosen to be born in a certain place is because on a soul level, you wanted that experience. Every place has equal value and every place has equal learning and things that need to be learned by the being that chooses to be there. So there's no mistake. There's no mistake you ended up on this planet. There's no mistake you ended up in the country where you were born. And it's the best place for you to be, have been born because it got you your start and it got you to where you are this very moment, this very second. So, and all you have is this now. So. Just, just know you did it right. There was no mistake, and it has everything to do with your choice. And and be 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 aware that you will always choose to give yourself what's necessary for you, what's meaningful for you, and necessary not in the way of oh you're going to have enough food to eat, you're going to have all the things that that people think make life successful, but necessary from the soul perspective of. You wanted that learning. You wanted to be this being. You wanted to be this person that had 
this, this, and this, and this, and had this, this, and this opportunity because you wanted to have the experience of that focus and that choice. So be proud of where you're from. Be proud of your soul for choosing it. And you did it right. There's no mistake. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you. There is no mistake. I wanted to repeat that because it is so true to to really um, reposition your perspective and realize that um, there is no accident, there is no coincidence, and there are no mistakes and there are no wrongs, and everything is exactly as it should be. So thank you welcome. for that. It is as it should be in the idea that we have the opportunity to observe it and experience it for the sake of experience. It doesn't mean that it's always the most pleasant thing, and it doesn't mean that it needs to continue exactly in that way. That's why choices come. That's why we seek pleasure over pain, because we we want to be laughing. We want to have the joy, but um, it doesn't mean that things that are not pleasant, that are not positive, have any less value. And that's a fine line, and it's a very difficult thing to explain and to con truly conceive, but there are no mistakes and everything is exactly as it should be in this now other nows will may be different and you can make them different so you want to be clear it's, okay it's, yes you can make your eyes roll back in your head truly it's a very high concept and very different to to say it but well um that does help to have that perspective so thank you absolutely um, all right, next we have a question from David. Hi, David. Hi, Theos. Hi. I was uh, so good to speak with you today. I, um, I've been sleeping a lot, but I guess that doesn't matter. The question is really about I'm, I'm going to be moving, kind of. I'll be going back and forth between two places for four months, and I'll be moving towards a powerful vortex and I was curious on your um, thoughts on maybe things that I don't know about vortexes I don't really know a lot about them that I can do in this new area um, to integrate with the healing work and anything else that may be um, beneficial to help me and help others and just experience it and be there are you going to Sedona no, this is here in um, near Rochester. Oh, perfect. State New York. Well, we'll just say this about vortexes: they have a lot of energy, and uh, you just need to always try to stay grounded because you can spend a lot of time in the up in the air, and that can be just as exhausting as not being near good energy and not being near uh, a flow of energy. Maybe not good energy. That's the right. Word to say, but flows of energy can be exhausting over a period of time. So keep yourself grounded. It's quite good that you'll go back and forth because you will notice the difference of being there versus being where you are now. And you may sometimes prefer one over the other. And that's that's to be that's to be expected. So a lot of uh, sorry. I have to have to feed the cats, so I'm going back and forth. To take care of the animals well definitely take care of your animals but but when it comes to the energy just be open when you're in it and when you are tired from it then make sure you're grounding yourself when in, in the high flow of energy it can be very exhausting on the body and the thing that makes it better is purification things like drinking lots of water, um, eating good foods, and, and things that are more clean because the energy can move through you much better. It's like having energy moving through a dirty, uh, a dirty cable or a dirty pipe. It can get stuck, and you want it to be able to flow. You want to be able to utilize that energy. So Yeah, what um, kind of things would I feel that would be different so that I know not to worry about the difference in how I'm feeling? You can feel over 
overwrought. Uh, you can feel like you have so much energy that you can't sort of calm down, that you can't uh, um, relax. And that is, that is because of sort of resistance to energy, but also at the same time have, not being in the right yeah physical form for it or to, to have it too much it's just like the same thing if you drank 30 cups of coffee the first couple cups might be nice but after a while it just becomes overkill 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 and the same thing with vortex energy it can be too much it can be too much it's such a concentrated form so you need to learn how through meditation to be grounded within the energy field and also filter the energy in through you so that you're not so much affected by it, but actually using it, being a funnel for it, but not necessarily having to experience it all the time because it can be exhausting. It's, it's high, high energy, a lot of energy. Like again, 20 cups of coffee, that's exhausting. And when you get out of that energy, you might see yourself crashing. But also, if you're in it too long, it's, it's like having, uh, um, I don't know, uh, um, a piece of metal in salt water. For a while, it's just in there. And, and then after a while, it starts to corrode. So you have to take it out and clean it. The same thing with yourself. You have to sometimes separate yourself out of it or create such a buffer around yourself that you're not actually feeling the energy all the time, but that you're just letting it flow through you. And that'll come from, from meditation and also grounding and, and being as pure inside as you could be. And, and in that, that area, will I be able to speak or hear from spirits? Because I hear that you that I might be able to communicate with them. Somebody said to talk to the trees and the spirits around there. And I was also wondering, I heard that some, sometimes there's visitations like people... Uh, uh, beings coming through the portals mm. and that in the forest there um, I'm just wondering about walking around there at nighttime with that happening I wouldn't be yeah. afraid of it okay I think that uh, most of the time when you're experiencing those things you have to be in the right frame of mind to experience it. the thing is the energy is neutral it's neither positive nor negative. It's just a big source of energy. So when there's portals, there's there's huge fluxes of energy. And how depending on how aware you are and how open you are psychically to the things, you will experience them or not experience them. I would encourage you to uh, speak to trees all the time, not just there, but everywhere. Um, you might hear them maybe in the beginning better there, but take whatever it is that you are experiencing there and bring it back to wherever you are. You, you can also make a sort of spiritual connection to that vortex energy and tap into it whenever you need it so that you don't have to be actually in that presence to access it. But things happen around vortexes. If you look at Sedona, there's all kinds of uh, reports of, of visitations and, and things that are happening there. So nice. everything, everything's possible. If you want it, I would just say make sure you're grounded and and you'll deal with it on a longer term a lot better than if you just go there and kind of get swept up. It's like getting picked up in, in a whirlwind and you want sometimes to be put back down. So can it sure help feet on in, the ground. increase abilities like being able to channel or that I'm sure that it helps with energy healing, but like learning to channel, will it help with anything like that? With, meditation or something yes and no you can channel now you can meditate now uh, there's if, if the only places that you could do it in the vortex the most of the world would be really lost the energy is it's the same as being in a place that has uh, cleaner water you can see the bottom of, of the of the pool a lot easier but it doesn't mean that the bottom of the pool isn't always there this just facilitates it you can it you you have access to tons and tons of energy but you always do you always do so 
it you will be heightened your senses will be heightened you will be uh, you will have less veil than say other places will have but it doesn't mean but the, that's all an illusion anyway that's all a belief and that's all um there's no there's no separation between anything so if you're truly tapped in you're tapped in and it wouldn't matter if you were you know in that place or or on the moon or or under somebody's couch in uh in minnesota it, it wouldn't really matter it, nice that's really good to hear so it, there's energy there for sure there's energy everywhere um, but it's it's more swirling there and and real quick um mm. how would it affect uh like sleeping uh, is there anything that would be different to... that's when grounding becomes very important like we said it's 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 a high it's like high octane fuel you will be energized so you might sleep better or you might sleep worse karen had the experience that she didn't like it too much being so close to vortexes for days on end she found it to be quite exhausting and she was very happy as she drove away from Sedona when she got about a hundred miles away that the energy just let go and she felt like oh, I'm finally can relax because it was too much and uh, what she saw there with the people there is that there was a lot of uh, frenzy in the way people approach things there was just this sort of frenzied energy and it wasn't as calm and you know, Zen like it was it was it was much more frenzied with a lot of people because they weren't grounded. So grounding is, is extremely important. You want your feet on the ground and you want to have your head in the in the clouds, but you want to have that you want to be firmly planted. So you'll experience it and, and maybe it's good to have the experience of both of being seeing the energy and, 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 and having it be overwhelming for a little bit and then being able to learn how to gauge it and control it because if you're not in control then it won't serve you so realize it's a source and a puddle of energy it's a pool of energy that you can tap into when you need it and for the and at the same time you can let it be you don't have to necessarily tap into it too much yes sounds like a... it's like going to a place with very good weather all of the time all of the time. Oh, I, I live there. And then wanting sometimes a little rain. You have to leave to get it, you know, or being in a place where it's only cold. And then you finally get always, always balance is good. You know, always, always the two are, are much better than just one concentrated con continual thing. It's like eating so much sugar. And in the beginning, it tastes great. After a while, it, it, it becomes overwhelming and then at one point you will become numb to it so yes thank you that was that was wonderful and sounds like a, a great learning experience and it will be valuable yeah it's very exciting congratulations thank you take care of your cats <laughs> yes all right beautiful thank you so much um, we have a question next from um, L. She had um, wanted to know from you, Theos, if you would have any uh, anything to say about an experience she may have had. Uh, she feels like she had a visitation this past night, last night or this past early morning, and um, she wanted to get a little bit of an elaboration about it. She said that she felt it may have been related to um, Jim, Jim Charles, our human colony channeler, and um, and she also mentioned something about pl the Pleiadian woman that she had seen before. Could you speak on that at all? One moment. Well, <clears throat> we would just say that 
her experience was part dream, part experience. And there were aspects of her being in a certain place and then her actually being asleep. And what we mean by that is she was having multiple experiences at the same time. Her body was asleep and she was unconsciously dreaming, but at the same time, because she is multidimensional, she was interacting with different beings, and one of them being Jim, and one of them being her Pleiadian friend. And we would say this friend is someone she interacts with, not just one time before, but often. And so the, the mix of the two of them is what's confusing her, because it wasn't clear as to where she was and what she was doing. But because we are multidimensional and because we do have the ability to experience multiple things at one time, that's what she was doing. And that's why it's muted for her. Um, the experience with Jim and the Pleiadian woman was an everyday kind of interaction where they were standing around talking and having a discussion. And her dream was her unconscious working out different things so she has them muted together and that's why it's unclear for her we would say to her that uh, she should work on uh, trying to do more lucid dreaming so that she can be more interactive in her dreams where she's actually with Jim and with um, this Pleiadian woman the Pleiadian thing is a theme and we would also say to her that on the Pleiadian side, she's very connected to Pleiadians, and she would be from that star system. And that's why she's having those interactions. And we all know that Jim is very connected to many, many different beings. So that's what we'll say about that. It was an experience, and it was a dream. It was both, because you were experiencing two consciousness at the same time. Okay, very interesting. Yes. Um, the more we understand about dreams, the more we understand about reality, it seems. Mm. Well, in, in multicultural, the, the, the thing that would be the observant part of this is to realize that she was interacting with two different uh, uh, states, levels of consciousness at the same time. And to, to realize that, that that's, that's quite an accomplishment to have sort of a split, split uh, experience. And to be able to see them both at the same time, that's that's quite good, really. And uh, she could have experienced several, but two at once is probably very disconcerting. You know, um, you, it would be the same thing as if you're sitting here and you're looking at me. When you close your eyes, you're in a different world, and you open your eyes, and you're back in that world. And to to see things, two things side by side, or to be watching, say, two television shows at one moment, it's very hard to have multi-focus. On a soul level, we do have that, but on our personal level, we we focus on one thing. That's why when we're here in this world, right where we are, we're only experiencing what we are experiencing because it, it's it's too difficult to have multi-dimensional focus. But on a soul level, we most certainly do. And that's why your mind gets blown, literally, because you, you, it, it, it's too, it's too big for this finite mind. This finite mind does see just here, but when you get out of this finite mind and you get into the infinite, you're experiencing everything at once. The infinite, that's what they're doing. But it, it's, it's quite interesting, and, and we're going to go somewhere else, but it's, it's relevant that if you want to know why people exist why things exist is because multi-dimensional focus even for the divine is too much individual focus gives that luxury of having the interaction with all the little things but when you're experiencing everything at once it's it's just phew. So it's through the created beings such as ourselves and other beings that actually get to walk through their life and, and have experiences. There becomes that genuine interaction with whatever it is that they are experiencing. Now the divine can see through all of that and, and take it all in, but each individual as far as divine interaction is, is really uh, 
It's really important and it's a beautiful thing and it's a beautiful gift, this life that we have, this divine interactive life. So, yes, it is. We would such say a gift. to you, your dream is a gift and to see it from the, the idea of, hey, I experienced two worlds at once. Amazing. That is so cool. And it's exciting for all of us, especially in terms of um, like uh, lucid dreaming and maybe practicing more of that sort of stuff if it interests you, um, because then it seems you're able to better connect your different versions of, well, reality. Um, the, the different astral planes and the different ways that we exist in our multi-dimensional experiences, if that interests you, it seems like that is a way to um, further that connection. Would you agree? Yes, yes, it is. And when you get to the point in a lucid dream where you can wake up, where you are con in control of it, and you can say, okay, I'm here now, then you're, you're really in a different reality. And that would be very exciting to be able to, to interact in that. Thing because when you wake up you will bring all that knowledge back with you now you have the thing where you go to sleep and you barely remember and you kind of know and you think you were there but you're not and the person was here but they aren't that's all uh, designed to uh, intrigue our uh, intrigue us so that we want to go further and a lot of it's unconscious and isn't really a hundred percent necessary to bring into our conscious waking but if you want to have more interaction in that way it would be very beneficial and quite fun for you to do so do it if you want that's our recommendation wow that's interesting that you uh you said intrigue to it's designed to intrigue our mind like on a higher level we are designing it to spark interest in delving into it more basically yeah yes it's it's a little bit of a, a wow. taste a taste of yeah. what's possible that's the same thing as you know uh, uh spiritual teachers are and, and you know you you get these spiritual teachers walking on the planet they're very advanced and they're doing things that nobody else is doing and it's not so much that you will ever really fully live their life the way that they're living it but it's an example to show you that something is possible it's to inspire you to 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 try to to do something more to realize there's something bigger to realize that there's some kind of higher uh, possibility and the same thing with everything look at everything as a possibility a taste of something more because that's what it truly is it's not there to you know show you that you're inadequate and you can't experience it. it's to say to you hey listen this is out here happening do you want to be part of it or not if the choice becomes do you want to be part of it or not if you say I don't want to do lucid dreaming then don't do lucid dreaming but if you want to it's there and and the more you practice it the more you it, you know go for it the more you'll have the chance to experience it look at everything as that way anything that comes into your path anything that comes into your consciousness comes there to it's sort of a little knock at the door like hello we're there do you want to do you want to go here do you want to experience this the universe always will ask you first it's not going to grab you it's just a plethora of uh, opportunity and choice. I like that a lot. A plethora of opportunity and choice. It's beautiful. Very cool. Okay. Thank you, Theo, so much. Um, wonderful. We have uh, a question next from... Jess444. Um, so Jess444 had asked in our chat here, she said, when channeling, I'm able to feel and allow entities to move through me, answering yes, no questions by reacting with a nod, yes, or a head shake, no. But I'm still blocked somehow to allowing vocal messages to flow freely. Do you have any advice to help heal my throat chakra and fully channel? Much love and blessings. We would just say to you, if it's not happening yet, then you're not ready. And it will come when you're ready. And don't force it. Just allow it to unfold. Maybe work on writing answers down. Uh, you might want to ask the question and then hear the answer. And then in your own voice, say 
what you hear. But we don't think there's anything wrong with you. We wouldn't rush it. We would just allow it to flow. When you are channeling different beings, uh, Karen only channels us, but when you're flowing with the different beings, there's a relationship that is made. And that, for Karen, came through the course of her whole life. And it's not been until the last five to seven years that she's actually been channeling us through her voice. But the interaction was there. So channeling has very little to do with the actual display of the ability. It has very much to do with the relationship you have with the beings that you're speaking with and the information that you're getting. So we would say to you, seek first the information, seek the relationship, the understanding. If you're not channeling to, there's also the distrust in, in the ability to do it, which would be one thing, or maybe these are not the beings you're gonna be channeling. So build a relationship and, and don't so much worry about if you can or can't do it. Everyone can do it. It's just a matter of when. And it's only also a matter of how you're going to do it. You may not be a voice channeler. Um, you may be someone who writes something down, but if you truly desire to voice channel, then you can just make sure that you're uh, sure that the beings that you are talking to are the ones that you want to channel through you. We're not saying there's any danger. We're just saying seek the relationship and build the relationship and the trust, and it'll come a lot faster. You know, and to be very honest, don't make the desire to channel the primary thing, make the desire to have the relationship and the interaction and the knowledge that, that can come the primary thing. That's what we would say about it. So we don't think you're, there's anything wrong with your throat chakra that it needs to be healed. We would say what needs to change is your impatience with the process and just let it be. Don't be in a hurry and ask yourself, why do you want to channel? What is it that you want to know? What is it that you want to experience? Because channeling is only the interaction of you with the larger part of you, really. So you can get to know you without actually having a voice come through you. That's what we're Okay. Saying. Wow, thank you. And I know that's really helpful for me as well um, in terms of uh, it's opening up and allowing for that connection to happen and less of the um, trying because the, the trying seems to really, the forcing, the attempt at forcing um, does get in the way a lot. So, and that's interesting too, a new perspective, a new way to look at it, just like how it was healing for me to look at pain, for instance, physical pain, mm -hmm. as a wonderful messenger, a beautiful, incredible experience to, that we are allowed, that we have the privilege of having, as unpleasant as it may be, it is ultimately uh, our body, our soul, our spirit trying to tell us something, it seems, and, and me having gone through a lot of physical pain myself with Lyme disease and fibromyalgia and then healing from it miraculously with energy healing, <laughs> but um, it's a new perspective to then be thankful for the pain, just as it is a new perspective to um, perhaps see channeling and um, the ability to connect as um, something new, something different, an experience we can have for the sake of expansion, and uh, and especially um, to see things like maybe if, if you're not doing it yet but you really want to, less of the, um, the worries as to why and more of the excitement for what's to come. Just that shift, that subtle shift in perspective seems to really help a lot. It very much has to do with attachment, an attachment to anything, an attachment to a good feeling, attachment to desire. The desire is, it's okay to have desire, but you can get also stuck on, on, on achievement of desire, and you can get stuck there. So, you know, many of the things that come with awakening are 
side effects of awakening, but they have very little to do with the awakening itself. And if you are only caught up on the performance of something, then you lose perspective of, of the why. It shouldn't really matter that you channel or not. What, what matters is the connection. You may channel and then it may no longer serve you. You may have telepathy and it may no longer serve you. You may have psychic ability and then it may no longer serve you. All of those things are just side effects of awakening. It's all within us. It's all part of who we are. It's just understanding that that is not it. That is not the place to stop. You don't become a channel and then everything in your life becomes better. You become in touch with yourself and in touch with the divine and in touch with everyone else. And then things start to change, not the other way around. It's very, very superficial. It's almost, and for lack of a better way of saying it, it's almost a party trick. And it has really little to do with being a better person. You can change your world a lot better by being kind to your neighbor and helping to feed the poor than you ever be by sitting down and channeling. And that's the reality of the thing. Be a kind person, be a loving person. Seek that. And maybe you'll channel. But the desire should always be to know yourself and know that you're love and be that love. The rest is just nothing. It's irrelevant and it's almost useless. So we say that yes. as we're channeling, but truly that's the way things are. You don't need to channel to be love. You don't need to channel to know the heart of, of, of the man and the person sitting next to you or the woman sitting across from you or the, the animal that you're taking care of. You need to love. And then when you walk in that love, you will be more powerful than any being that's ever walked the planet. And that's really the goal. So, but channel if you want. All right. Beautiful. Thank you, Theo. Okay. All right. Next up, we have a question from Omar. He, um, he wasn't sure if this had slightly been answered with something else you had said, but I think it is a good question to ask. He said, um, what is the perspective of the use of and incorporation of thoughts from your point of view, would you say the positive experiences enable expression of beneficial spirit or spirits to live within us? We would ask if that question can be rephrased because we truly don't understand the question. Okay, um, he, he had asked on the YouTube chat, so I will get him to um, rephrase it from his point of view. I guess maybe focusing just on the first point of the question then, what is the perspective of and the um, way to um, incorporate thoughts from your point of view in terms of positive experiences? Well, thoughts are based on what you believe. So thoughts are evidence of what you believe. You can find out what you believe by what you're thinking. So what are you thinking? That's the question. And you can change your beliefs by making choices. You can choose to have another truth. You can choose to have another uh, experience with something and then your thoughts will issue from that. Everything that is a thought is just a sort of bubble that comes off of this belief. If you would think about things bubbling up, the thoughts are the things that bubble up from your core beliefs. So you can examine your beliefs, your choices, your thoughts. You can observe them and decide if they serve you. 
if you are thinking only negative things, for instance, you're thinking, oh, I don't like that person, and that person's ugly, and that person's not worthy, and, or thinking that about yourself, then you can observe that thought and say, okay, is that really serving me? If you know that love is the basis of the universe, you can always look at the difference between what you're thinking and what you know to be true. So if you believe that love is truly the cosmic energy of the universe, then you can say, is this thought really in line with what I believe to be true? And then you work on changing your beliefs about things. And we hope that answers the question because the thoughts are really evidence of what you believe. And what you believe may or may not be in line with truth. So you have to be willing to do that work and take an honest look at what you're thinking. Also, what you're thinking can be you know, influenced by what you the environment that you're in all of the time. If you're only feeding yourself, for instance, pornography, then your mind will be much more on sex. There's nothing wrong with sex. There's nothing wrong really with pornography, but you have to wonder if that is where your energy wants to be, if that's lining up with your truth, if staying in that base red chakra all the time is really gonna serve you. So. Thoughts are just part of what you put, part of what you believe in the world, and they definitely are influenced by your environment and what you are feeding yourself, what you're feeding your eyes, what you're feeding your ears, what you're feeding your body, what you're feeding your spirit. So we hope that answers the question somewhat. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. And um, thank you for the elaboration there. Uh, Omar did say, um, he said, like thoughts that we use seem to become what we are and doing and in doing so the positive ones seem to be spiritually implanted. So I think as we improve, we become collective mind implanters to an extent. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> collective mind implanters. So, um, if that helps reiterate a little bit what he was saying. Well, we would like you to not measure everything as being an achievement or as being a non-achievement. It's a progression for sure, but it can be uh, considered to be positive or negative, but in fact it is a progression of a soul. Um, you are born with knowledge of your divine self and you're, you spend your life coming into this world trying to remember that fully again because overwhelmingly that is your driving force. You forget periodically and from time to time as you get caught up on the way things are and, and your everyday experience, but ultimately that is the big driving force. So yes, it's definitely implanted in you. The 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 belief and the knowledge of, of your true divine self being that of love. But we wouldn't measure it so much. We don't like the question that people ask where they are spiritually because they are where they are and they're in the right place. There's no point system. There's no achievement level. You don't get gold level if you do a certain amount of things and you don't uh, go back to... Uh, kindergarten if you do certain things. You're always progressing. You're always in multiple levels at many times. You might be excelling in one thing, but definitely lagging behind in others. But there's no real point system where you, you get the gold medal of spirituality and move on to the Olympic Games. So we would just say be, try to find your knowledge of truth and then live in that. That's really all we can ever do, always. And it's a constant struggle in this body because we're seeing things that aren't real and choosing to believe they're real and then having to remember that they're not really real 
it's sort of a mind uh, game and it can be quite confusing. So you're doing all right. I'll just say that. Thank you, Theos. We are all doing all right. Definitely. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, okay, we have a question next from Allie. Um, she had said, could you please elaborate on how to deal with family and the people you love when they don't seem to understand your choice regarding the spiritual path? We have so many answers to this question. The premise of your question is the issue and not the situation that's happening. You need to allow them to think whatever they want and not worry about it too much and not need them to think what you think. It's the same thing of being able to observe a different world and having the privilege to observe it and to notice that that different world is existing as well as where you're existing. And that's all you can do. If you know something to be true for you, then it's true for you. And you don't have to prove it to anyone. You don't have to have anyone agree with you ever. And that's all you really need to do. If it causes conflict within your family, then you will have to deal with certain issues, whether they decide they don't want to talk to you or you don't want to talk to them. That's really little, little tiny choices that are made. But we get the impression that it's more that you want them to understand what you're experiencing because you believe that it's better than what they're experiencing or that you want them to understand you because somehow it validates you but you shouldn't need their validation if it's your truth so we would just say to you let them believe what they will they're going to anyway and you walk in your own truth always you always walk in your own truth anyway Everyone has their own personal beliefs about everything. Some people are more in line with each other than other ones, but for the most part, every person has an individual belief that's a little different. But everyone has their own reality, truly. And if you truly, truly, really understand that every person is walking in their own reality, we just are sort of, if you picture bubbles that sort of bump into each other, sometimes they intersect, sometimes they don't but you get the privilege of seeing their reality. Appreciate their, try instead of having them believe what you believe, try appreciating that their beliefs are what they are. Try celebrating their ability to make choices about what they believe and leave it there. And if they don't wanna hear what you believe, then don't share it with them. It only adds to distress. So, and don't be attached to it. Your beliefs may change. You may decide that uh, you don't believe what you say you believe right now and in three months from now, you may believe something completely different. So let them be and you be, and then it will go a lot smoother. But people don't need to believe anything that you believe at all, ever, ever. Yes, that's a very important point. I know for myself personally, um, to, to just reiterate, really, people do not have to believe and it's okay if they don't and everybody does have their own path so that was a beautiful way of explaining that it's yes. much appreciated because this can be tough for us and for our egos i think um it, this... it really is an ego driven thing it's yeah. really an ego it's a it's, it's it's a need for someone to agree and it, it's not that they need to agree with you you need to allow them and 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 be excited about their decision to not believe what you believe. How amazing is that? You've got all these people walking around in their own worlds and you get the chance to peer in on theirs and experience some of what they're doing. But it doesn't need to change anything you believe. And it definitely is probably not going to change anything they believe. It may, 
What will change people is when you walk in love and show them unconditional love in every moment, regardless of what they believe. You know, if, if they're hating you and you love them, that will change them more than you telling them that they need to believe something because it's going to have some sort of outcome. Look what I know. Love people. Love them. You love people by your action. You love them with your words. You love them from your heart. It has nothing to do with belief. Do you love someone, you love your child only because they think a certain way? You love them because they're your child. And you love your fellow man because it's your fellow man. And that's it. That's the only qualification that they need. You love them because they exist, because all that exists is God. And you are part of God, but so are they. So how would anything that they believe not be what they need to believe? It's pretty simple. So, Yes, it is pretty simple, ultimately, but we enjoy complicating things, or we have in the past. It's, it's so a big, it's a big learning. Away. It's a big learning. Yes. But that's, again, the, the letting go of that separation, appreciating and marveling at the infinite creation that exists. Um, Karen did a, a, a exercise that we gave her many years ago when she was first living in Holland and she her thing was I, I, I want to love everybody I want to know everybody I want to experience them, them as myself and we started talking to her from the idea of that everyone is existing in a vehicle and the vehicle is the body and we know that to be true and you probably all know that to be true and she started to try to separate the idea of a person being there but truly a vehicle truly a physical body is just being a, a, a capsule that holds the soul and she would do this exercise in the mornings as she was going to work because she would ride the subway and she would be on the subway and she would start observing the different vehicles around her and really looking at the different bodies as being physical beings with ornamentation. So one being decided to decorate themselves with long hair, and one decided to have freckles, and one decided to have no arm, and one decided to wear striped pants. And she started to try to appreciate each individual's choice in how they weren't ornamented their lives, but ornamented their physical being. It was a great exercise. And she started to marvel at what these beings had created as she would walk along the streets realizing that many of these vehicles had participated in the building of the street where she walked and the concept of the building that she was walking into and everything that was around her had been in some way created by another being in a vehicle and so it became a different way of looking at things and, and the marvel of really appreciating each some she preferred some she didn't but it was a very eye-opening experience for her to really realize that we are these sparks of the divine and we are housed in these vehicles and everyone is driving their own vehicle across the across the the world and has its chance to interact with the world and affect it in some way and that's a much different perspective then because then she would realize that all those vehicles are just extensions of what she potentially could have been, but had chosen something different. And so she started to appreciate the different choices, whether the other vehicles knew it or not. So start to see yourself as just a being here in a vehicle body. It also emphasizes that you should take care of that vehicle because you're only going to get 70, 80, 90 years out of that vehicle and the better care you take of it, the better it'll serve you. But even breaking down the vehicle can serve you in certain ways. So it's never other people that need to accept us. It's always we that need to accept them. 
And that's always the answer when things aren't going well, when people are not understanding you. Ultimately, it's you not understanding them and needing them to understand you. Because even in their not understanding of you, you can still love them. And it doesn't matter if they do or not. Yes, yes. And, and I also wanted to add in here, it also doesn't matter when it happened in our perceived linear timeline um, that we live in. And uh, we do have quantum supercomputer brains. And so if you did go through uh, a fight or something, a negative experience, um, I know this has helped me a lot as well, and it's synchronistic because somebody in the chat had just said they just um, had a fight with their father, and it was weighing on them a lot, but ultimately he uh, was sending his father love. He was loving his father even in the fight, it seems, and afterwards, and I'm sure without any doubt told him, also actually said to him, I love you during or, or after the fight, and I think that that um, says a lot, but even just thinking it, even paying that mental um, currency, that energetic currency of the frequency of love to that situation is so healing no matter what happened, no matter when it happened, truly. It seems, absolutely. Yeah. Good. So that is beautiful, thank you. <laughs> Um, all right, so next we have a question from uh, Louis, or excuse me, Shaheen is next. Shaheen, are you able to speak up? Yes, I am. Everyone can hear me? Mm, yes. Okay, good. Yes. Um, I had a really amazing dream. I was dreaming I was standing in the street, and I saw someone walking past me, and then behind the jacket, the leather jacket he was wearing, he says, 1101. And then as soon as I saw it, I go, oh, that is so powerful. Next minute I know there's a uh, Marco Angel came down and straight away, the force was so strong. And I was like blown away. And then suddenly I just wake up. And so I was wondering what's so bad. And, what he is trying to say to me and all that. I I was really like over over excited. So I really want to know what that means. This is very um unusual, but we feel that Bree should answer this question. Oh, um, I'm I'm so sorry. I caught um, almost all of that question as far as the please the, ask the not question, question again. Yeah, only because please. we think it's important for Bree to answer this question, and and we just think it's a, it's something active within her, and we think that she should answer the question. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Um. Because when I dream, uh, there was some man walking with a leather jacket. Back of it, it says one one zero one and I said to myself well that is really powerful message and I was stunned and suddenly I see Ark Marco Angel coming down from the sky between me and this gentleman and 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 I really felt his presence like really strongly so I was and then I was really stunned so I wake up out of it so I don't know what's meaning or you know, I'm confused. <laughs> so I'm oh. trying to put everything positive, uh, I mean, in a puzzle, in the right way. That is so beautiful. That's amazing. I'm curious if you have been seeing, because I'm seeing this as um, angelic numbers, clearly. I mean, this is yeah. uh, the, the most ultimate form of synchronicity, it seems. Um, because you're not only, I mean, are you seeing 11s and a lot of 1s in your waking reality? Lots. Lots. Anywhere I look, it's Lots. like 1, 1, or um, five, one, one, 5, something. So it's like, yeah. yeah. It's just, just wow. going 1, 1. So, yeah. And it's funny, yes. earlier someone write down 1, zero one and like okay I'm gonna add another one there <laughs> so, 
when I would tell these stories. So, yeah. <laughs> well, it's so much fun. I know, especially for myself, um, really getting more in tune with your own spiritual path and tuning into the present moment that has completely transformed my personal reality and I am now also seeing synchronicities especially number numerological synchronicities every almost every waking moment and it's been transformative so that dream for me really represents um, the the most blatant way of saying you are on the right path you are doing absolutely what you should be doing and keep pushing forward because it, things are just as they need to be for um, your growth and evolution and spiritual expansion um, that that is a message directly from Archangel Michael it seems mm -hmm. um, and that was I mean yes we can call things dreams, but as we understand uh, more about it, it, it is actually reality in that form as well. And, and so um, that is so beautiful to hear that experience because um, it's one thing to, in our, in our physical reality, look at a license plate and say, oh my God, what a beautiful synchronicity. Those numbers have such profound meaning to me right now with the thoughts that I was just having. Um, but to ha have that happen in a dream in that sort of way, that is amazing. Were you able to communicate at all with Archangel Michael? Um, do you have any memories of what happened after after that experience, or did it kind of melt away from there? No, uh, after that, when I wake up, I go in the car to go to the shops, like buy something like milk or something. And I saw, as I'm driving past, and I saw the clouds. It looked like it's angels standing next to each other. Mm. You know, like you know, how you grab a bunch of papers, you cut them as a cactus, oh, yeah. and you just them out it was like lined up and I go wow he's really here and then as I went to the, inside the shopping center in a, um, a escalator and then I saw the glass where the clouds are again same thing over and over so these past days I've been seeing a lot of like angel uh, wings in a cloud in a it's just it's like a big and small and different shape, but all look like wow. symbols of the angels' wings there. So I know his presence is really strong in here. Yes, right now. without any doubt, it absolutely is. You have uh, so much guidance and uh, support, absolutely, within the angelic realms and otherwise. So um, yeah. that is amazing. And I actually wanted to add in here on this topic of what had just happened to me was um, the experience of having uh, my bank account, my checking account equal, as I was paying my credit card bill, it equaled 11, 11 yeah, it all equaled 11. My confirmation number for paying my credit card, um, my bank account, everything, th there was 11s all throughout the day and it was, and then eights, lots of eights, you know, and, it, yep. you know, manifestation yeah. of, of abundance and everything is abundance. We have abundance everywhere, just that appreciation for all that. So um, that was profound for me, as profound as that dream sounds like it was for you. Theos, is there anything you would like to add on that? I hope I quote, did all right. <laughs> <laughs> you did all right. It, every, everything is, is, is the, the constantly, the universe is reaching out to us, just wanting us to notice it. And Archangel Michael is, is an incredible being because of what he represents. And also the protection to, to realize that you are protected, that you are guided, that you are you have that presence around you to take something from the dream world into the waking world is is brilliant so appreciate it it is only a chance to, for celebration to to be excited and ecstatic for the opportunity to interact with the spiritual in your present waking state as well as in your dream state so 
we would only say to you the thing that you should do is be appreciative and thankful and celebratory and ask for more. Say, uh, it's wonderful, I, I acknowledge you, I see you, I'm, I'm here. You know, uh, the, the, the idea that when people are looking at clocks, at their digital clocks and they're seeing numbers and things are lining up, isn't it incredible that the universe will use whatever method it can to just reach out and, and touch you and say, we're here, we love you. That's brilliant and, and to appreciate that is really the reason. Everything can be a celebration. I would be celebrating. I would be celebrating. Yeah. Give an offering, give a light, uh, you know, throw some flowers in the water or plant a tree or pour some milk on the, on the tree. Do something well, in I... celebration and appreciation. Make an offering of some, something to nature. That's what we would recommend that you should do. Yeah, I've been planting a lot of trees and because I live in the big farm, so I'm in farm and city. So I've been planting a lot of trees and flowers and stuff like that. So yeah. that's my everyday job in a way. Very good. And, and just continue to be celebratory. And every time anyone looks at the clock and they see 2-2, two, 2-2 two, 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 or one one seven or whatever they're seeing, then just say, I, I see you. Thank you. That's all. That's all you can do, really. And just be excited. Be excited that through all of this, the divine is always reaching out to you. Sometimes, you know, we're constantly, if we're praying, we're asking, we're asking, but sometimes the divine is also reaching out to us. When you see something truly miraculous, numbers lining up, it's no mistake that every time you look at the clock, you're seeing numbers lined up. That you could look at the clock any second of any day, of any moment, but you only look when the divine is calling. It's pretty miraculous. So acknowledge it. Say, I know, I see you too. Thank you. They're taking Thank time you so much. to reach out. So acknowledge it and you'll get more of it. You'll get more. And then yes. it's just a beautiful dance. It's it is the most beautiful dance. Yes. And being in that frequency of gratitude for me has been transformative to see those synchronicities and to just thank the universe for having the opportunity to even recognize that's what they are. Um, it's beautiful. So, and the more you do it, the more it comes to you. And it is absolutely incredible, miraculous, magical. So make your reality magical. That is Make your reality as magical as you want it to be, I should say. It's, it's amazing. So um, thank you, and that is great. So thank you, Shaheen. Um, we have one last question. I realize we're running a little up, and I had not even... Is that okay with you, Theos? Mm, it's fine. We're okay, here. wonderful, wonderful. Um, so our last question is... From Franti. Uh, Franti, are you able to speak up? Yes, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. yes thank you. Hello, Karen. Hello, Theos. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm uh, curious about um, these uh, uh, tendencies, I would say, to at certain point uh, of uh, long enough doing things uh, the gentle way uh, kind way you know expanded slow uh, after a certain point it uh, sort of switches uh, flips to uh, i would say uh, very decisive or i mean like um, immediate and uh, not hesitating at all, uh, way of doing things very fast. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I would say one is really being in now, mm -hmm. here, <laughs> not thinking, not even knowing what's what's outside of it, and, and just uh, pulling things uh, right here. And the other is is kind of like uh, looking at the things that are. Uh, 
uh, that are greater than me, uh, be, being sensitive to fears of others. And uh, why why these two, to me, you know, contrasts? Uh, why do we have that? And uh, I don't I don't see it as wrong, or I, I don't complain. I just uh, don't, I just want to understand this. Thank well, you. Anything that's happening with you, whether you're focused on, you know, are you are you basically saying sometimes you're very much in love with the world, and other times you feel very much like you want to force things to go a certain way, and and you lose your patience. Is that what you're is that what you're saying? Mm, not really force. Let's say, yes, uh, it, it's kind of like losing patience. Mm. It sometimes comes uh, as a shock as well or as, um, as a, like you cannot, ho cannot hold anymore, cannot stay here anymore. Or, or even uh, lately for me, it is, um, it is more conscious. It's not like um, it, ha it so suddenly happens. It's, it's like... I decide, uh, well, what am I waiting for? I have the ability you know, to really act now or anything and do it and I go, go there. Um, so it's like... Well, we would just say to you that in any, every moment you have the choice. And some moments it's more important that you make a choice quickly than other moments. So there's some moments where you can stroll along smelling the flowers and then there's other moments where you just need to get stuff done. So those moments can be dictated by necessity of need or, you know, of what needs to happen. On the bigger perspective, ultimately, it's always about having that knowledge that you have a choice, how to react. In some way, when you finally let go of all of the need to understand, because you do understand, then you would just be and you would move through the world making choices quickly or not quickly or interacting but always doing so from the perspective of love and always from the perspective of joy but we're all not there it takes quite a lot and that's what this life is about it's about being able to get to the point where we consciously make the choice it doesn't matter if you do something quickly with purpose or slowly but ultimately, it's about doing it from the standpoint of, of love and, and joy and understanding that whatever you're doing, you're doing it because it's reflection of ultimately who you are. Whatever you're doing is a reflection of where you are in your journey. And sometimes you're really in a good place and sometimes you're not. So the, 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 the learning for all of the beings in the world is to get to that place of centeredness, quietness, where you can make decisions that reflect your true self and then are not just reactions. Sometimes you react well, sometimes you react unwell, but that's only because you're not, it's kind of a uh, Let's say it like this, it's kind of a roulette wheel of, of what are you going to get today. Some days you might be really, really in a good place and other times you're just not. And that comes through practice, but that's why we're here. So the, the more you can observe the world, the more you can be observant of it, the more you can make conscious choices about it. And sometimes we react. For instance, we are always in a state of reaction and non-reaction. We're always in a state of even in non-action, there is action. You're breathing unconsciously, that's action. But you may not be currently moving, but somewhere in your body there's something moving. So there's never an absolute when it comes to what's happening and what's not happening. The, the idea is just not get to be too judgmental about it and realize that our ultimate learning here is to get back to that oneness place where it's all flow and it's all love. But as long as we're in these bodies, there's always going to be a little bit of a challenge to remember that we're not these bodies. 
It's a great paradox. You're not the body, but you're in a body. And everything you see is through your physical eyes, though none of it's really real. It's kind of a confusing game, to be really honest. But we chose it just for the fun of the paradox. If we were on no spiritual path, life would be a lot easier because we would just do and we would just be and we would experience and we would move forward and we would sit down and we'd have a cup of coffee and we'd eat some chocolate cake and we'd fall in love and we'd make babies and we'd die and we would just do it because that would be all there is. But we are constantly confronted with the contrast that there's something bigger and something more. But ultimately, it is about just being and doing and experiencing and appreciating that that's what we're here to do. So, we answered your question with a paradox, but life is that. We are spiritual beings having a human experience and not the other way around. We need to allow ourselves to be human, however, and not get too upset about any of it. And remembering who we are, we can just be who we are. So work on the remembering, and all the other choices will come along. And we hope that answered your question. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I would... Uh expand on it uh, but I don't know if, if uh, it's appropriate or there's sure. that. Why not? Expansion yeah. is always good. Yeah. Um, so, thank you. So for me uh, I, I would give two examples uh, to mm. make it clear. Uh, well first is with my son. Um, he hates uh, being uh, his head being showered and um, yeah, sometimes you just need to wash his head. So I, I, I am, I, I'm treating him very gently. I'm learning that. Yeah, but there comes a point when when he uh, goes into panic, he's crying, you know. And I, I know that uh, that the shampoo is going to get in his eyes. So I'm at that point. Uh, I just hold his hand and shower his head. And that happened, and I uh, think uh, it can be done better. And uh, the second example is my girlfriend uh, hurt his, her leg and uh, uh, couldn't sleep the whole night and was crying. And I just I was telling her just to uh, let it let it uh, let it loose, you know, bandages and everything, explaining. If, uh, I uh, couldn't sleep as well, and at a certain point, I just uh, I just took the bondages and uh, put it away, and it was uh, gone in a second. All the trouble, you know. So there's that, there's a point where where the tr I cannot simply watch others uh, causing uh, themselves trouble, and and I solve it, you know. So this is this is these are the two examples. I don't see it as wrong or. Right, I just, uh, um, you know, wish to uh, understand more deeply uh, where do I come from in here, you know, where's, what, what, what am I learning uh, in being uh, sensitive and uh, compassionate and, and uh, you know, caring and slow uh, and gentle and and then what am I, what am I learning with this this acting you know unstoppable yeah well we would just say to you that you know taking the bandages away and and making the pain stop is a necessary thing because it served a purpose and there shouldn't be any judgment about it you you performed an action that was necessary at that moment to solve her problem and with your child, we understand that taking a bath and having your hair washed can be distressful. But as the parent, in this, in this uh, you know better. So there's choices that you're going to make that may not be outwardly the most pleasant choices for the person. 
that's experienced in them, but this is just life experience and we wouldn't put too much emphasis on it. The one thing we would say to you is you're loving your child enough that they have a clean head and eventually your child will come to appreciate having a clean head. We, we would say to you that if your girlfriend is hurting, work on solving the problem of the hurt and not get into the philosophy of how she needs to let the pain go. If a person is starving, you feed them. You don't talk to them about the philosophy of overcoming their hunger. Serve the problem, love them, and that's all you need to do. And the learning will either be apparent now or later. But sometimes it's just about focusing on the need at hand. You don't have a burning house and talk to the people trapped inside about how they should focus on water and that they should focus on not getting burned. You help them get out of the house. There's, there's things that you just do because it's the thing to be done in the moment. The question would be for you to let go of your belief that it needs to be handled in a way that's not just direct and practical. Direct and practical has a purpose. It has a, a, it has a definite outcome. So everything is spiritual because you're a spiritual being. You don't have to put more into it than what it is. She's hurting, you fix it. He's dirty, you clean him. He may or may not understand or choose to understand, but that's his experience. Yeah, but I'm you don't choosing have to live there. But you don't have to live their experience for them. She was with you and, and asked for your help. And that is that is your chance to love. Uh, not really. <laughs> that's the point, you know, and not, they're not really asking for help at that point. It's just that I don't I cannot watch them suffering and I, I just uh, choose to ignore their fears and, and go for it. <laughs> That's also part of the learning too, following your own instinct. So we wouldn't put too much emphasis on it. We would just say things are sometimes the way they are and you interact with them. But don't have any judgment about it. If you're always operating from a standpoint of love, then that is all you really need to focus on. If you find that you are acting out of irritation because it's pissing you off, then that's something you need to work on. But that's only something yeah. you can work on. She's not going to change. It's not her issue that you have a problem with her pain. It's your issue. <laughs> yeah. Now, in the, in the case of your child, it would be very much so that even though he's crying and, and upset with you and maybe mad at you, you're choosing to do something ultimately for him that he needs. You have a lot more problems if you have a child that, that never gets a bathe, bath ever than you would if you give him a bath. But there's a, there's a point when that will change too. He will want to bat yeah. bathe himself. So, but don't put too much yeah. emphasis on it. Thank you. It was beautiful. It was mm. beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Theos, and thank you, Franti, and thank you, everybody who has participated today and asked questions and um, given us the energetic exchange of your currency of focus. We appreciate you all, and we love you. Thank you, Theos, for joining us again and for providing such wonderful higher level wisdom that we can all take and incorporate into our lives if we so choose if that brings us joy so we always appreciate you coming by and um we love you so much thank you much love to you and we love you too we love you too so. thank you we hope to see you again soon and um Please, please take care in your light body experiences you're having. <laughs> Namaste. Namaste. It's really, really dark here. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, I noticed that just uh, now. I like, need to, wow. uh, I'm going to turn the lights on. Um, yeah, give me one moment. I, no problem. I, I didn't know it was dark. I didn't know it was dark. It happens with the, with the channelers as they come in and out. And it's I had no idea it was dark. I can't hear you, so. Oh, I had no okay. idea that it was dark. That's funny. <laughs> well, there's been definitely a passing of time, yes. Um, and we went way over oh. today, and I do not care. So. <laughs> oh, wow. I am just... Over. Yeah, I am just so happy we got to have this experience. I know it was very expansive for me and I think a lot of other people. Um, so thank you everybody who has uh, joined today and for everybody who's watching or listening later on. Um, thank you, Karen. Are you doing all right? You need yeah, to... Yeah, I am fine. Yeah. I, didn't, I, awesome. know, I didn't know it was dark. I didn't know what time it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. The, the time... The, yeah. this today definitely um so we just appreciate you you know coming by and uh, channeling for human colony we always love having you and and theos and um what what was that like for you just now did you have any um what was the experience like i'm curious as far as um i'm i'm just uh gosh i don't it's hard to explain but i'm there but i'm not there so um, it's, it's like suspension and being in suspension of time and, and uh, uh, I'm experiencing it and I kind of think I remember most everything I think but I'm not sure <laughs> because if I don't know I don't know um, yeah yeah but it, it's it's a it's a they were perplexed a lot I think they were thinking a lot more than uh, yeah they were thinking a lot I heard there was a lot of thoughts. Let's just say huh. there was a lot of there was a well there was a lot of co um, um, uh, thinking. They, there was a lot of comparison of experience, like searching through a rolodex of knowledge. They were sort of yeah. trying to give um, uh, real world examples of what they meant, as opposed to just sort of talking in a sort of you know. And I don't know if it came off that way, but I think they were trying to really give some direct uh, perspective as opposed to talking in parables as they do sometimes. Oh, well, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Wow. Well, and I noticed that today, and, and I liked that a lot, um, especially when sometimes they'll pull from experiences you've had or um, things that you're kind of currently thinking while the thing is being answered. It, it's very, you know, because then it gives that human perspective as well from their point of view, but not. I, it's cool. I like it. Well, I, sometimes I'm sitting there and, 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 and in my vision, I'm seeing them as me talking, but it's sort of like I'm over here and I'm sort of going, but tell them that and tell them, and don't remember that time. And I'm this sort of instruction. Yeah. Oh, saying, well. well. Don't you remember that time, this? And don't you? Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. It's just, it's amazing how all this stuff works and just learning about it is just so much fun. Yeah. For me, at least. I... It is, too. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Anybody else have a question? I think Anybody? with that, we can probably... I didn't probably... understand. Didn't understand. <laughs> I don't know I'm I sorry, what did you say? I said, did anyone have any other questions of something they understood or wanted to know or didn't want to know? Um... You know, uh, I haven't seen anything pop up here yet, and um, and I, as we had uh, said earlier before we started, um, please, if anybody does have any uh, questions or if they do want to get in touch with Karen for uh, private sessions or otherwise, definitely we can um, have you go, you can email max at humancolony.org or um, Jim as well and uh you know you can go through that route and definitely check out humancolony.org yeah. and see what we have going on there see our events that we have planned like to um, um 
helping with moderation, helping with transcribing, whether it be galactic blessings or channelings that we have done in the past, please let us know. Go to our website and you can volunteer for all that fun stuff. We need help because we are doing all of this out of the goodness of our hearts and for the um, excitement with moving forward in a new earth in a um, reality which we choose to create out of love. So please let us know if you would like to help out. We appreciate all the help. There are some cool things stirring in the community. It seems lots of people are getting things started up. So um, you know, watch out for light language, hangouts that we're gonna be having, and uh, just like other cool things, other cool hangouts. Um, you know, keep in touch with us, and we are just so happy to have everybody on board. So, um, is there anything you wanted to add, Karen, or anybody else? No, I'm, I'm good, I think. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, I just wanted to plug the channel panel again. Yeah. yeah. For people, please check out etwhisperer.com, and um, you can find the channel panel on there. That's Rob Go Goff. Is it Gauthier? Gauthier. Gauthier. Gothier. Goth See, Gothier. everybody pronounces it differently. I thought well, it was he right. says okay. my name is Rob Gothier, so I, I go with that. Okay, <laughs> that is what I accept. That <laughs> Rob Gothier. So he is incredible, and um, it's just so kind of him and uh, and his team to have put together the channel panel so it's a two day long event lots of channelers coming they go for like eight hours or something incredible and it is all recorded and streamed if you want to participate so check it out because the stuff that people are doing now like the channel panels is absolutely transformative i had watched um the one uh, that they just, I think they just took it off for free, but last year's channel panel was so amazing. The information that came through, it's, it's so cool that we get to have these um, things in, in our... Uh, yeah, and Roxy's is also cool. on the channel panel this year. Yeah, Roxanne Swainhart. Oh, you there. cut out there. Did you did you say that Roxy is channeling yeah, this Roxanne's year? Roxanne's on the channel panel this year, yeah. Oh, cool. I didn't know Roxy was channeling too. Oh, that's so exciting. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to see it. That's amazing. Um, yeah, Osipius. Yeah. Amazing information yeah. through Osipius. So that is very cool. All right. Wonderful. Well, thank you, everybody. We will wrap up for today. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your weekend and time. And we love you all. Much love. Namaste. Namaste.